Overstock.com looks a little different this morning. The company has officially rebranded itself to Bed Bath & Beyond, at least in digital form, and after paying $21.5 million to acquire Bed Bath & Beyond, Overstock customers on its Canadian website were redirected beginning in early July. But today, that change expands to the United States. Bed Bath & Beyond CEO Jonathan Johnson joins us now in a first on Yahoo Finance here officially making the new regional change here in the U.S. Take us into the strategy, the decision-making, the timeline that's going into this. So we've long liked the name Bed Bath & Beyond. It was an iconic name that was synonymous with home. Overstock, as good as our business model has been, the name really didn't describe who we were. So the opportunity to purchase the name, we tested it in the rollout in Canada for a month. We saw better direct traffic, we saw better conversion, uh, all signs were good. So today's the day in the U.S. that we've relaunched as Bed Bath & Beyond. And so tell us about what you're seeing already in terms of people coming to the site. And I'm also curious, you know, were people sort of waiting for it? It launched in Canada before, were people coming to Overstock.com kind of were you seeing an uptick in traffic ahead of the name change is what I'm asking. Not in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, we did see a big uptick in traffic in Canada. The other thing that we saw was suppliers who we've long sought to do business with or to have them open their whole catalog to us uh, started knocking on our door, opening their catalog. So since we uh, the deal was first announced, we've added over 600,000 new product SKUs in the bed, bath, and kitchen area. So um, it's a much deeper and broader offering than we had as Overstock. I think the customers are gonna recognize that. It's really a great place to that, shop. Wait, that's really fascinating to me. So those bed, I mean, obviously those suppliers needed a marketplace for their stuff that went away when Bed Bath & Beyond closed its physical doors. How, it, are they um, suppliers that you had tried to get access to before, and now the name change has unlocked that? Absolutely. Huh. You know, we, we always felt like we had a wonderful business model, but a boat anchor of a name. Bed Bath & Beyond, great name, outdated, had become a boat anchor of a business model. We dropped the boat anchor from both, we put the two things together, and with both customers and suppliers, it seems to be pretty sleek sailing right now. Talk to us about that customer experience because a lot of people who had engaged with the previous brand or the previous iteration of, of Bed Bath & Beyond, they would say, all right, the digital is great, but what about those physical coupons that I used to get? Those physical coupons, a lot more digital these days now with, with the transformation. How do you look at the promotional cycles, the customer engagement, where you're going to be able to leverage this name to drive more loyalty even? So we have always been a high-low retailer, highly promotional using coupons. We'll continue to do that. For the Bed Bath & Beyond legacy customer that love the coupons, mm -hmm. what they really need to do is download our new Bed Bath & Beyond app. That will be the way that special promotions will be pushed to them. We have today, as people download that, a 25% coupon. You know That is a big blue coupon that will be in their app. Uh, and so I think it'll be feel very familiar, both as the products they see on our site and the shopping experience with great corporate deals. Now I will say this, I will say this, our pricing has always been a little sharper. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, beyond this initial promotional period, we probably won't coupon quite as large, but the out of the store checkout will be better deals. I think that's what they'll see because our pricing has been so sharp. Um, I've been looking at the sort of tea leaves for the home furniture and decor industry. The last retail sales report we got, while it was disappointing overall, saw an uptick in furniture sales. There was just a report um, out earlier this week from Piper Sandler on one of your competitors, Wayfair, that talked about stabilization in home furniture. Talk to us about what you're seeing. So what we're seeing is a more normalizing of the seasonal cycle. So, you know, this summer, patio furniture has come back uh, in seasonality like it didn't last year. Because the, people had already bought all their stuff during the pandemic. People had bought it during yeah. the pandemic. There was also a glut of inventory last year. So there's a normalizing of the seasonal nature, but the spend is still down a little bit. 
uh, I don't think we're back to normal. You know, as you were talking earlier in the show about people buying experiences and Taylor Swift and whatnot, that's, that's still a thing, but the market is getting a little stronger in our space. What would you say of the, the quality of inventory that you're seeing that consumers are opting for? Are they, are, is there a trade down even as they're coming back into that spending propensity in home furnishings? So we make sure we have a good, better, best offering so that people can buy you know, the price point that they want. But we have seen you know, over the last six months a slight trade down. You know, if they were better purchases, they're a, a, a good purchase now. So uh, that's happening. Uh, you know, when interest rates continue to go up, it makes home buying hard, it makes moving hard, all of that affects our industry as, as home products. Um, when you look at the expansion of what kinds of products you guys are offering, mm. I would imagine, and I don't know, but I would imagine something like furniture is a higher margin business than some of these more home goods items you can, you're can you talking about. So what should investors expect from the picture of your profitability going forward? Yeah, so we, we mentioned on our earnings call last week that we do expect our average order value to go down a little bit, because you're right, buying a patio furniture set is different than buying a sheet set. And so uh, we expect AOV to go down a little, but we also expect order frequency to increase. And so uh, while we will initially have a big push and spend more on marketing than we have in the past as we rebrand, and that will affect profitability for a time, in the long term, we think this is actually going to be great for both the top and bottom line of our business. I want to focus on that, that word beyond as well here, because mm. I, I mean, that really opens up different verticals that you could potentially tap into and how you brand the corporate culture of the company, how the external culture and how the company is perceived is also taken on. So where do you kind of intend to lean further into the name that has already been recognized and what that appears like in the stock and investing community versus the customer community and different verticals that you launch? You know, so for now, we're really focused on being a home furnishings, and home decor retailer. We're Bed Bath and a much bigger and better beyond because our product offering is there. But where it goes into the future and different verticals still be determined. We're really focused on this rebrand and making sure that the home customer knows that the new Bed Bath and Beyond is a great place to shop. For now, it's still overstock as the parent company and the ticker is still OSTK. Any timeline for when that might change? Yeah, you know, Julie, we get asked that a lot. It's it's something that's in the works. Uh, I'd like to have it change sooner than later um, because I, I don't like the confusion around the two. We were really focused on getting the rebrand and the website up running as quickly as we could. That's our next step, and we'll have to come back and talk again when we do that. <laughs>